Hello everyone, my name is Epos Fox, and we have a question from a commenter on my previous Premiere Elements 12 tutorial asking for the best render settings for 1080p footage. In the tutorial, I went over 720p render settings for YouTube, however, he's looking more for 1080p settings. Now he uses a T3i video camera, well it's a DSLR, but T3i video footage and he's looking to make sure it stays as crisp as possible on YouTube. It's a little difficult to work with since YouTube often lowers the sharpness. So after you do this initial rendering, if you notice it's not quite as crisp as you would like, um, I would recommend adding a little sharpness to your video. If you go to the effects tab down here and search for sharpen, you can get sharpen right here, drag it onto your clip, and then it will add the sharpen to your video. If you go over here to applied effects, you can see what effects are applied, so I accidentally added two sharpens here. Um, and it'll just kind of lightly crispen up in your video and you can add as much as you want, but keep in mind, the more sharpness you add to your video, the more likely it will be grainy or have jagged edges in the final project on YouTube. So you, you, you don't want a whole lot, but you can add a tiny bit to compensate for YouTube's compression. Now he mentioned that he's using um, T3i 1080p footage. Unfortunately, I do not have a whole lot of that to work with at the moment. I'm actually going through and clearing out a lot of stuff off hard drives because a couple are failing. So I don't have a lot of footage to work with on this computer at the moment, but I do have some badly white balanced footage from when it was snowing that I shot with my T3i just for the hell of it. And then some Call of Duty 4 gameplay footage because it's also 1080p so you can see how it looks with these render settings rendering at 1080p to YouTube. Now getting to the render settings themselves, you'll of course want to make sure your project is saved and then go up here to publish and share. You're going to want to go to computer, and then you're going to want to find AVC HD. This is going to be very similar to my 720p settings, except we're going to change quite a bit. We're going to, in the drop down menu next to AVC HD, you're going to go to MP4, H264, 1920 by 108030. Or you can start with YouTube widescreen HD, but that's not full 1080p, so we're going to go with that one. And then we're going to customize it a bit, because it's not going to be exactly how I would recommend. Now checking the multiplexer, you do want to be MP4. Go to the video tab, 1920 by 1080 is obviously your footage. If you shot it at 24p, which you might have at 24 frames a second with your T3i, then you'll of course want to change it for that right here. But if you shot it at 29.97, then, or 30 frames a second, just kind of leave it there. Now, for YouTube, this is actually really ridiculously high. Uh, what I would recommend, especially since you don't get a high bit rate from your camera, is to set this at a maximum of 26 megabytes per second, and then set the target to around 19. And actually, we'll make that 24, because I think the max that shoots at is 24. So, 24 and 20, and then a VBR 2 pass. And, that, and then, if you want to the two pass is not necessary but it's going to make your footage look a bit nicer however anything you change starting with this two pass and a couple things i change is actually going to slow down your render speed so you're going to want to balance how well you actually want the video to look with how long you want to spend making it look that good so two pass basically renders it twice but increases the efficiency of where it puts the pixels and where it you know puts the bit rate so if you put it, you know, as many passes as you can get, it'll make it look a lot nicer. So I'm putting two pass and then actually render at maximum depth. And that's going to make it look a tiny bit nicer. You, you really want to get the nicest source footage you can get um, up to YouTube before it compresses it. That way it can look as good as possible. Now, again, I'm pretty sure your footage is going to be at a maximum of about 24 to 30 megabytes per second. If you over bit rate it, if you put more bit rate than you have in your source footage from your SD card, it's going to look bad. Like it, it, you get some distortion and noise. So you always want it slightly lower. So that's a good bit rate for YouTube for 1080p. And then make sure you do two pass and it'll clean it up quite nicely. If you want to, again, take a little bit longer to render and make it look a bit nicer, you can set this profile to high and level to 5.1. 
and then make sure you come back here and do change your frame rate back to 2997 or 24 because it jumps it up there and that'll just basically increase how well the encoder runs so you can do that and then your audio bitrate you always want it set to 320 kilobytes per second always leave it at bit just leave it at bitrate but change it to 320 kilobytes per second and you are pretty much good if you know a decent amount about audio and you know that you're running at 41 or 44.1 kilohertz audio you can change that but honestly there's no reason to mess with it so big things to note about the render settings mp4 h.264 from the avc hd profile make sure your frame rates right you you're either shooting most likely at 30 or 24 frames a second if you're shooting the t3i doesn't support 60 frames a second at 1080p but it does at 720p but just make sure your frame rate set right you would have that set in your movie settings in your camera 16 by 9 wide and then the important things to note are the vbr2 pass and then 24 maximum bitrate 20 target bitrate and then 320 kilobytes per second audio and that is your preset you want to go hit ok and then you can save it let's save it as youtube 1080p click ok and then tell it where to save and render out your video and it's gonna look pretty good i am gonna render this sample video and include it at the end of the tutorial so you can see how it looks and judge for yourself hope you enjoyed the video guys hope this helped out the couple commenters that were looking for different render settings if you have any other questions you would like me to answer about uh, the premiere elements editing things like that let me know in the comment section below my name is Benny Pulse Vox see you all later Thanks for watching Epos and Chew. Let's play together. If you enjoyed the video, consider clicking on the screen to subscribe now. To watch another video, click one of the video annotations on the screen above. Links are also provided to our website, Twitter, and Facebook pages. See you next time.